think it starts well before they get here, and I think preparation is really important. There's a, a, a fantastic website at, based at the University of Southampton called Prepare for Success, which individual students can use to get themselves ready to come to a UK university, so it's not specifically Scotland, but it's, uh, it's full of amazing videos and just fantastic resources for them. But the most important thing of all is, is the curriculum. So what have we done? to internationalise the curriculum, to make it easy and interesting for international students to access, while also helping our domestic students to have a more internationalised experience. And that's absolutely the focal point of all activity, I think, for, in terms of um, making the student experience more internationalised, as it were. Well, there are some things that are probably only relevant to international students and that's, that depends on, con on the country. Uh, it might include police registration, it might include visa requirements and renewals, those kinds of things. So there are some things which are quite specific to international students. Um, but as I've argued in my presentation, uh, we can't really make the distinction between international and domestic students as easily as we used to be able to because our populations are so diverse now we need to think about an inclusive approach to welcoming students to university not all international students need help with their English language, for example, but not only international students need that, there are many domestic students who need things that we perhaps think of as specifically for international students, but we should stop thinking that way. So I'm arguing for then a much more inclusive approach to university transition. To think about people with different sets of needs and different sets of issues as a, a, gr a group, a diverse group that we can be inclusive of and that we can think about social and cultural needs of the whole student body rather than just make a very simple divide international and domestic students. I think the, the, the key thing is to think about the whole university being internationalised. Every single person in the university has a responsibility to think with an international intercultural mindset. For example, governance. Can everybody read the kind of documents that we produce, the student regulations, the requirements? You know, does everybody really, are they written in accessible language? Um, what about the, the person who's on, on, the, on the gate of the university, for example, if somebody's being welcomed in, are they used to seeing people from other countries? Are they going to be welcoming and friendly? Um, and what about, uh, the, the, you know, just everybody who supports the curriculum, the administrators, and, you know, really, literally, everybody in the university should be covered when we think about internationalising the university, internationalising the campus. So it's not just going to happen automatically, it's not going to happen just by putting a whole group of people from different cultural backgrounds together. We've got to be purposeful, we've got to work at it. It must be intentional. When I was working uh, at, at Leeds Metropolitan University, as it was then Leeds Beckett University now, we did all kinds of really interesting things, including um, asking, uh, inviting staff if they wanted to take part in international volunteering alongside the students, um, offering all kinds of mobility experiences in that way, but also thinking about internationalising the campus. I had this series called International Reflections uh, which ran for seven and a half years on the website which was like a blog but before everybody knew about blogs and and you know cleaners, drivers, anybody, with the, you know all kinds of people were writing for this and I think it was uh, it was really instrumental in changing the kind of culture at the university. Really to emphasise that I believe that transformative internationalisation can come not only through international engagement but through encounters with cultural otherness of any kind and in a way it's the wrong term to say internationalisation, really we should be thinking about interculturalisation. There are certainly a number of instruments that we can use to help 
academic staff look at their curriculum to evaluate how internationalised it is. Uh, for example, one um, which is available on the, the Australian website ioc.global um, is called the Questionnaire on Internationalisation of the Curriculum, came out of Betty Lesk's work there. And really that's designed for academic teams to sit down together and evaluate their own programme and think about how international are we? What could we do instead? How could we do something to, to change this? So um, the measurement side, I, I, people love statistics and figures, don't they? But I think we've got to focus on qualitative issues, and particularly because that's really the only way we can get to the student experience. Mm -hmm.